Uh, so this is 15.5, part two. <coughs> So we're going to talk about parametric surfaces and surface area. Metric. Parametric. So in chapter 14, we, uh, we came up with a way to find the surface area of a surface. So that was chapter 14.5. We said for a surface <coughs> given by z equals f of xy, the surface area s was the double integral over the region of ds where ds was the square root of f sub x squared plus f sub y squared plus 1, da. And we came up with that by considering a small portion of the tangent plane. And we found um, vectors that uh, were uh, parallel, that, that were, that were uh, along the sides of a little rectangle. And we took the cross product of those two vectors, and that's how we came up with magnitude of the cross product was approximately the area. And that's how we came up with this expression for this little element of surface. We're going to make a similar argument for parametric sur surfaces. And the, the reason we're spending a little bit of time with parametric surfaces is that when we, in talking about these parametric surfaces, it makes, um, it makes what we're going to do in the future a little less like we pulled magic formulas out of the hat. So we can understand where these formulas are coming from. So here's our... Here's our picture. Here's our surface. This is going to be a parametric surface this time. This is given by R of U and V. So we have some kind of parametric surface. And what we're going to do is construct at a particular point. We're going to construct two vectors. And I'm going to call this a vector in the v direction. So that's going to be r sub b. And this is going to be r sub u. And when we take the cross product of those two vectors, I'm going to move this over because I need to put a new vector in there. When we take the cross product of those two vectors, we're going to get a normal vector to the surface. So when we take, when we take a, a, a derivative of this with respect to u and a derivative <coughs> with respect to v, we get, we get uh, tangent vectors at that particular point in the direction of increasing v or in the direction of increasing u. We're going to take those derivatives to get our tangent vectors. We're going to take the cross product of those to approximate a little bit of area on the surface. Well, the cross product is a normal vector to the surface at that particular point because it's orthogonal to each of those. All right, so let's magnify this picture a little bit. I'm going to go to the next page. So that's our setup just like, just like in Chapter 14. So we're going to magnify that view.
So here's one rectangle, or one approximate rectangle. I'm going to put quotes. So we have a little, a little piece of the surface here, like so. At this particular point, we're going to construct two tangent vectors, r sub v. And another one going this direction, r sub u. And this little distance along here is delta v. And this little distance along here is delta u. So we're dividing that little triangle. In the, if we project that down into the UV plane, the side of that little rectangle is delta U times delta V. And R sub U and R sub V are tangent vectors at that point. And normal vector N is R sub U cross R sub V. Now, if we let the delta u and delta v be very small, then using the same argument that we did in chapter 14, um, the area of this rectangle is approximately the magnitude Um, R sub u cross R sub v times delta u delta v. And the area of the surface is going to be the sum of those small, small portions over the, over the surface. And we take the limit as delta u and delta v approach 0, and we get an integral. So we can say that our area, surface area, is a double integral over our region of the magnitude of r sub u cross r sub v du dv. And the region r is a region in the UV plane above which where our surface lies, with the area of which we're interested in. And this is equal to, I can write this as the double integral over our region of the magnitude of the normal vector <coughs> times du dv. So we're, we're integrating magnitude of the normal vector over the, over the region that we're interested in, the magnitude of the normal vector of the surface. This idea moving forward, so we're talking about the magnitude of the normal vector, it's going to be important. If z equals f of xy, we, we can parameterize our surface in terms of x and y. X and y xi hat plus yj hat, like we talked about yesterday, plus f of xy k hat. And our surface area integral becomes what we had before. So we get the result from chapter 14. So we could apply this same argument. We could parameterize our surface apply the same argument, and we get the exact same formula as we, as we did in chapter 14. And what we're assuming here is that, um, that our surface is a smooth surface, and our, our cross product doesn't, e doesn't evaluate to zero on the, on the portion of the surface that, that we're interested in. 
I'm just going to write this, rewrite this. So our surface area is the double integral over our region of the square root of f sub x squared plus f sub y squared plus 1, dA. And I want to, before I do any examples, I want to look at this quantity. This square root of f, f sub x squared, f sub y squared plus 1. All right, are we good with our, with our setup? Taking the cross, we're approximating an area with a cross product, magnitude of a cross product. Another one of those things from, from pre-calc that we thought was just some, something that the, just thrown out there just for, just for fun, becomes pretty important. All right, so I wanna look at this magnitude of f sub x squared plus f sub y squared plus 1. For z equals f of xy. And I want to relate this back to something that is some, hopefully somewhat familiar. If z equals f of xy, I can write f of xy minus z equals constant, or equals zero. What is a normal vector to that surface? f of x, y, z equals a constant. The gradient is a normal vector. A normal vector to that surface is del f. Well, here is capital F. What is del f if this is our function equal? Well, how do we find the gradient of this function? Oh, f sub x. F sub x plus, plus f sub y minus 1. Minus one. What's the magnitude of del f? Yes. Square root of f sub x squared plus f sub y squared plus 1. So when we see this quantity again in the future, we will be able to recognize quickly that that's the magnitude of del f for that surface. The magnitude of our normal vector, in this case, when z equals f of xy, is the magnitude of del f, where f is f of, f of xy minus z. So that's going to be important. So we're going to be doing some operations with a normal vector, and it's going to be convenient, very convenient, to write that normal vector, normal vector as the magnitude of del f. And it makes very nice things happen in our integrals. All right, so this is, this is something to put in our back pocket so we can pull it out, pull it out again and use it in, in a couple of sections. All right, isn't that nice? So when we were finding surface areas in chapter 14, what we were doing was integrating the magnitude of del f over our surface. OK. Let's look at a couple of examples. This is, a, this is where it, one reason I like chapter, when we get to chapter 15 so, so much is because all of this stuff that we've talked about starts coming together in interesting and unexpected ways. Whenever you can see your favorite group. <clears throat> um, I think uh, my... <laughs> no, <I'm not> <laughs> <laughs> my <laughs> Why did you say that? that 
Hang on, let me write a note to myself. <laughs> um, I think I think it's not not really a proof. It's it's at the very end when we can when we can give a uh, a physical uh, description of what the divergence and what the curl is. That's that's my favorite part. But we can't really talk about that until the very very end. We have an idea, but we can we can make it more um, concrete. All right, let's look at a couple of examples. Uh, with parametric surfaces. So here's, here's uh, something that's, that's going to come back from when, when we talk about this, chapter 13. Find an equation for the tangent plane. To the surface given by, we have this nice parametric surface, ui hat plus vj hat plus the square root of uvk hat at 1, 1, 1. That's kind of an interesting, interesting surface. Oh, and I, let me get this going. I, had, I forgot that I had these pictures of these surfaces for this section. Demos, chapter 15. There we go. We'll talk about Mobius because when we talk about flux, we need to talk about an oriented surface. And Mobius strips are non-orientable. Non All right. So what do we need? What do we need to, to write the equation of a tangent plane? <laughs> we need a normal vector, right? Right. We, we use a normal vector. The normal vector gives us our direction numbers for uh, for the our equation of our 